and shit back then. Of course. You know of course. Who you, who you take? Yeah. Headshots or touch money? I'm going with headshots. Explain why. You know, I rock with North no matter what. For sure. I'm biased. For sure. I'm sorry to say I'm biased. For sure. They say that about me too, she. They say, they definitely say I'm biased and shit. Because I say touch money because H is folks, but. You know what I mean? That shit was a good battle. That shit was a good back-to-back. -back no, it definitely was. But I'm, 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 rocking, I'm rocking with North. I mean, everybody got, everybody got their own opinions and why they like certain people. You know, man, I'm rocking with North because I'm biased. Right, right, right. For sure, for sure, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yo, one thing about you, bro, you got a good story, man. We going to get to it. Man, I, I want to say that I'm happy that you're home, man. I can't wait to Thanks, you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I can't wait to get in your duffel. You know what I mean? But look, we going to start from the beginning, though, she. Like, we going to start from the beginning and shit, like. I'm, the first question I'm gonna ask you and shit is, what is the earliest? What is the earliest memory of you playing basketball and shit? The earliest memory. Said, what's the earliest memory? Yeah, the, the earliest memory. When, when, of I, when, when I started playing ball. Yeah. Um. I started when I was around, probably like sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade, when I was when I was going to me elementary mm. school. Mm. But I started taking it serious mm -hmm. once I got in high school. Mm. Okay, okay. That's when you start taking it serious? Well, yeah. The, that's what I was going to ask you. Next question, like, when do you start taking it serious and shit? Well, who influenced Who influenced she? Like, who influenced your style, your, your style of the game? Who, who influenced you, bro? Well, one one, one influence was uh, one of my close friends. I care Frazier. They call him Giddy from 32nd and Norris. Mm-hmm. Once, once, once he died, you I mean I took I started taking basketball seriously because I knew I knew how much he loved the game and how much the game meant to him. So, and and partially I was right there when he when he had collapsed up him gathering. So once once that happened, that's when I kind of really locked in and took basketball serious. Mm, that's what's up, bro. Well, the so next that, was like, that was like a, that was like a big influence. Right, right, for sure. Let us know the training process and shit. Like some people don't know, like you know, what I mean, what y'all ball players go through and shit. Like, like certain processes, like let us let us know like the training process, the, the process that we don't know about. I mean, a lot, a lot of people think it's just basketball, you're just going to the gym and just shooting around. No, it ain't, that ain't just basketball. I mean, basketball come with, I mean, working out sometimes three times a day, twice a day. Um, you gotta do I mean, you gotta do conditioning. You I mean there's a lot of running. I mean, there's a there's a lot of thinking and, and there's, there's a lot of confidence. So basketball is like it come with a lot of it's not just walking to the gym and just take a rock. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's, it's like it's like you got it's like it's a, it's a lot to come with it. Like main part is getting yourself in like in shape, like a hundred, like all the way in shape, hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? People can go play bar every day, but it's if you can play forty minutes a night. You know what I'm saying? Like NBA players, they play forty minutes a night. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't just like just go and just like oh we're gonna shoot around. No, they lock in. They do they they, they work with their body. You know what I mean the biggest the biggest aspect is like is your body getting your body right, running, running, running. You know what I'm saying? Keep yourself in good condition. Real so sure. it's, it's Real a lot. Sure. It's a lot when it comes to basketball. It's just not just shooting around. Or people think, oh, he just good like that. Real shit, bro. Real shit. Well, how was your junior in high school? Like, like for for a nigga like you that had so much talent and shit. Like, you know what I mean? How like how was that? Like, you know what I mean? Being in high school and shit. Like, my my junior my junior year was good. I mean, that's when I that's when I really started blowing. Like my temporary year, then my eleventh grade year, my, when I really took off. Right, and that's because I, I played I played AAU basketball with Philly Pride, and I was traveling all over the world playing against the best players. And that's mm. how my name really got out there because I was going to these tournaments out Orlando, um, Miami, all over the world. I was going there playing the best players, some of the best players like the Harrison Twins, Andrew Wiggins, Zach Levine. I stood out. I stood out um, against them players. So that's how my name really got buzzed, and I got into the ESPN ranking and stuff like that. Real shirt, sure, real shirt. Sure. So, uh, you know, I mean, you from being down north and shit. I'm definitely from North Philly too and shit. Like, yeah. how how was how was the neighborhood like? Speak on the, the up, you know, the upbringing of man from the hood and shit like that. I mean, it it, it, was, it was much love. I mean, the neighborhood was behind me. They definitely showed a lot of love, a lot of support. I mean, everywhere I played, they always showed up and they just always kept my name alive. So, I mean, anything was basketball, they always brought my name up and let people know who I was, even if people ain't knew who I was. So, they definitely was riding behind me 100. percent for sure, for sure. I want to know, like, let the people know, like, places that you traveled, like, places that you traveled that you wouldn't, you wouldn't possibly be able to travel if you went, if you didn't play play basketball and shit, like. 
man. To be honest, the truth that's that's everywhere. Like like Detroit, um, Miami. Um, I've been I've been all over the world. Tell you the truth, California. Um, I've been, I've been all over the world. I, I don't think bas if I wasn't playing basketball, I would have took them trips. I've been overseas in Paris, Italy. I've been all over Turkey. So I don't think, right. to be honest, if I wasn't playing basketball, I don't think I would have took them trips. So Real I've sure. Been, I've been everywhere, like, yeah. For sure, for sure. Let us know, like, uh, your, your college experience and shit. Like, you definitely went to, you know what I mean, St. John, you definitely was, like, you know what I mean, that was like, you was going crazy in St. John and shit. Let us know your experience. Clear. Clear. That, I mean, that, that was a good experience because one one of the main reasons why I chose to go there because, you know, my mom was sick during that time and I didn't want to go too far from home. So, I mean, I had a lot of schools. I had every school in the country, so I could have went anywhere. But, you know, I chose to go there because, you know, my situation with my mom was sick and, you know, I had to come back and help her and it wasn't too far. So it was two hours away. So I figured if I go there, I can get back home anytime I wanted. So that was one of the reasons why I chose um, New York. And another reason why, because, you know, New York is like they got one of the biggest marketings, and I knew, mm. I knew they're, they're, they're marketing me well. So, that's, I mean, that's one of, that's another reason why I went there. So, that's what led me going to New York. And, uh, you know, my dream is to always play in the garden. You know, every dream, everybody wanted to play in the garden. You know what I'm saying? Real shit. That's so real. I, I, mean, I, got, I got a chance to do that, you know, play in the garden. It's a good experience. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. You know what I mean? All right, so you in St. John, whatever the case may be, you're doing your, you're doing your thing, whatever the case may be. So when did the when did the fall occur? Like when did your, she draw and fall? Like so, you know, I left I left St. John like my sophomore year because you know, you know, I mean, coming from the hood, you know our situation, you know our family needs. So I yeah. figured, you know, man, I go play pro ball. Mm. And I was I was supposed to enter the draft, but you know, but I had a lot of stuff going on like my agency, and you know, I I was like in between. If I wanted to play my junior year, if I wanted to go back to I mean, um, play professional basketball, so. Time was ticking, you know, I was being a kid, running around in the summertime, and it came down, got down too late, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I had no choice but to go to the um the G League. Mm. But the, the mm -hmm. G League, the G League basically was like, it was basically like my, my soft, I mean, my junior year in college, that's basically what it was. I was going into the draft that year. You know, right. things, things went left, you know, and I was just, I mean, wrong place, wrong time, like I caught up. That's all that was about. Right, right, right. Well, let us, I, I don't want to get too much in the charges and whatever the case may be. But just, I, I just want to, you know, elaborate on, like, the, your jail experience and shit like that. Like, when you went to jail, whatever the case may be. And shit, because you was on top and shit. Definitely was on top. Yeah. You know what I mean? You was doing your thing in the colleges and shit. You know what I mean? Then you just, you in jail now. Like, you know what I mean? Everything, your mom is sick and shit at the time, right? And shit, yeah. Jail, my, right? Mom, my, mom, my mom also passed when I was in jail, so. You know, it, it was, it was, it was. I mean, you know, you know how it is for anybody who ever been in jail, so in jail, you know, you go from having a silver spoon to a plastic spoon. You know what I'm saying? You used to having it your way, and you know, you, now, now you in a place where you got to do what people tell you to do when they tell you to do it. So it was just like, you mean, just like slavery. Tell you the truth, you know what I mean? And it, it was, it, it was a bad experience, you know. But you know, as a man, you know, I stood on what I stayed on. Like a lot of people don't know, like basically, I was locked up for not cooperating. So you know, where we come from, you know. We, st we still right. on that code. We still on that code. You feel know what I'm saying? Right, right, so, right. You know, I still on that code, and I deal with the consequences. You feel know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, we don't we don't look at the we don't look at the bad stuff. We look at the good stuff. You know what I mean, some some worse could have came out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, everything happened for a reason. So, for sure, man. Well, you while you was in jail and shit, you lost your mind, right? Yeah. Like, like, just speak on that, man, because I that you know, what I mean, that's a terrible situation to go through and shit, like. You lose you lose your mind while while in jail and shit. Like, let the people know like what your meant like what, what, where your mind was at your mental your mental frame and shit. Like, I mean that was we all know like if you lost your mind we know the feeling. But like being in jail that was like one of the worst feelings because, you know when you locked up and they and they call you to the chapel when you get that call and you, I mean mm -hmm. you you know once you get that call from the chapel you know it's something bad. But we you know as being men we don't expect that to be our mom. From saying we just talked to her that day before so. You know, I got the call, I mean, and I got the call with my mom, you know, and and what hurt me the worst was, like, I couldn't be there for my brothers and sisters, so that was, like, the worst part about it, you know what I'm saying? And I was just, like, right. I, knew, I knew I couldn't do nothing. I was stuck in the cell, so, you know, I did what everybody else would have done, I mean, took it as a man, cried, cried, cried plenty of nights, plenty of days, and, you know, just pushed myself through it, I mean, and a couple mm -hmm. months later, I came home, and that was the best part about it. I still, I still got to see my family, you know what I'm saying? 
But you know, that was, that was one of the worst experiences ever, man. And I don't, I don't wish that on nobody. My worst enemy. So for sure, I mean, for if, sure. If you still got your mom, man, cherish cher your mom. That's one thing I must say. Cherish your mom, man. Always be there for it. Was you only get one, man. I wish to this day that you know everything could have been different. I would never went to jail, and um, I mean, put a, put a little bit more pressure on my mom. So one question though, one question. While we right there, like, did they let you go to the film? Did you, they let you? Uh, did you see? You get a chance to do that? No, like I could have, I, I could have went. You know, they, they, my people was gonna pay my um, but you know, I can't see my mom like that. So I just figured I just stay in the cell. You know what I'm saying, I mean, that's that, that's kind of that's kind of hard being away from three and a half years, and then seeing your mom coming back, seeing your mom in the casket. So you know, I figured just stay in the cell and just cry it out. Right, right. That's all I can think I can do. Right, right. Well, you definitely strong for that, man, for sure, man. Uh, so you you get out of jail and shit. What was your mindset at when you get out of jail and shit? Like, be honest, man. My mindset was just to just to come home and just spend as much time as I can with my brothers and sisters. I know they need me the most, so that was that was like my main focus. You know what I'm saying? Just to come home and just spend time with my my family. Just be there for my brothers and sisters and just I mean, give them a shoulder to cry on because I know it's gonna be a long road and it's gonna be hard because you know I got little brothers and sisters. It's gonna be hard for them to get used to not having my mom. So I just wanted to be there for them. That was like my main goal. Right, right. So how many years you did? I did three and a half. Mm, mm, that's something to go through, man. Yeah, so you know, we, I'm still going through it, but you know, we pushing each other, man. My oldest, my little brothers, my sisters, we pushing each other every day to be there for each other, and that's all we can do because, you know, my mom, my mom was the type of person. She was a strong person, you know. She, she, she wasn't into all the little, little cry baby stuff and you know, stuff like that. So she, you know, she raised us right. You know, we just here for each other. We're gonna push each other. We might have bad days. I be telling them like that, but. You know, at least we still got each other. You know, she up, right. she in a better face. She done watching us. Real shit, man. That's that's like I said, man. That's something to go through, man. Like for sure, man. So, uh, so like, let us know, like, you know, what I mean, you know, the first day you you got out of jail and shit. How was that? How was that? How how was that and shit? Like, <laughs> I mean, it felt it felt unreal, man. Because you know, being locked up for that long and they finally let you out, you feel like it's like I mean, it's a dream. So. You know, when I got out, I mean, I just wanted to hurry up and get off the get off the premises. Like, man, get me out of there before they change their mind. That was my him, man. That was my <laughs> like, man. Listen, this this can't be real. You feel what I'm saying? And it, it, it was kind of it was it was kind of like hard because you know that's the day my mom always talked about was coming and get me and and, and enjoying that time. So you know, when he let me go, looking around, she wasn't there. I mean, that was kind of hard, but you know, see my siblings there, it made it even it made it better. Right, right, right. How was your ball experience inside of jail, man? I, 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 a lot of people I, I, ask me that. I mean, I was the same as I was in the streets. I mean, I was playing ball, trash, and dunking on niggas. You know, anybody else locked up with me, they'd tell you. I was the same person. Same person in the street. I was the same person in jail. I was the same person. They nothing changed. Played ball in there every day. You know, did what I wanted on the court. Did what I wanted in jail. The same person. I mean, I don't like to brag about it because it ain't good. But, you know, I was the same person. Everything I did out here, I did on the streets. Real shit. Real shit. Yeah. So, so all right, you, you came home, whatever the case may be. You back in the gym. You back. You back on your ball shit. So what what made you go to uh camp then? Like what made you want to join uh camp then whatever? Case I mean one did? one of the reasons why I joined Camden was cause um, you know, I was I was like real tight with the coach Stan Laws. You know, I I've been around since I was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. he, he was like he basically like like always like he was like he was like a mentor to me too as well, like helping me get through get through things in life when I was younger, always been there with me. I've been to been to his camps. And right. you know, I just you know, I just wanted to just I mean show people that I still can play no matter what. And I also want to show people that I hold myself. It's not about where you where you playing that. You know, over there you're not really making no money now. It's just something, but I just want to show people right. that I'm a new person. I'm humble. Like no matter what I play, I'm just gonna play. You know what I'm saying? I also did it to just like get in shape. I mean, you know, I was I wasn't hundred percent in shape. I was you know, I was in jail, you don't get to play ball every day. So, you know, partial right. way I did it to get back in shape and just had something right. to do. Stay out stay out the streets, man. You know, you see all the stuff that's going on now, the killing and all that. So I just want to distance myself from it. Real shit, man. Yo, your life is like a movie. So, what is what is there for the future for you, like, like, what, like, what do you see yourself up in five years? Like, you see yourself going overseas, or? I mean, I, I see myself going overseas in the next one or two years. So, you know, mm -hmm. every everything work out. You mean I put everything in the law hands? Like I said, everything happens for a reason. You know, I could be back right. on TV with an NBA jersey. You know what I mean, so for sure. I got for got sure. a lot. Of, I got a lot of overseas offers right now. I got a lot of offers overseas, Puerto Rico. You know, there's a lot of people offering right now. You know, so I'm just wearing my best options out and see. I mean, see what the best options for me to take care of my family. Right, right, man. Oh, this is a good question right here. 
who was your tough competitor for you out here in Philly? Tough in, in Philly, like my era. Yeah, your era. Um, you know, like I like everybody say, you know, man, Brandon Austin. So that when I was in my era, man, Brandon Austin, that's we always went at it. And, oh, and, sure. um, and you know, one of my close friends, Ryan Day Hollis Jefferson, you know, it was just like us three. That was my, I mean, we all, all three of us went at it. Mm. Mm. But I, I can say in Philly, man, BA, you know, we went neck to neck every time we played. I mean, that was one of my closest friends, but we gave it to each other every time we was on the court. Right, right, right. Yo, it's, it's like, like I said, man, your, your story, man, is so touching, man. And, you know, I mean, we, we just wish the best for you. She, like, on some real shit, man. We just wish the yeah. best for you, man. I'm a, I definitely, I definitely want to uh, talk about rap with you, though, man. Like, yeah. Like, who, who she, who, who she fuck with? Who you, who you fuck with in Philly? Like, can name, name five people up and coming that she, like. I listen to Lil, Lil, Lil Mama Cinco, you know, of course, that's my block, you know, Poundside, um, Leaf Ward, um, Za Sosa. Mm. Um, who else? I listen to Tor. Mm. I listen to Brucey, Brucey the Rapper. You know, I listen to a lot of a lot of, a lot of Philly rap, like no Philly rappers. You know what I'm saying? Some was Philly rappers. I listen. I listen to a little bit of everybody though. You know, everybody right now got their wave popping. You know, everybody popping right now. You know, man. You know, well, sure. One other thing, man. One other thing. Uh, how your relationship with uh Fat G's and shit? I, you know, what I mean, I know that was your guy that was running around. No, you know, I mean. That, that's all, that's my brother. That's always gonna be my brother. But you know, as you know, people grow. We separate. You know what I'm saying? He called me the day tomorrow. You know, I'm there for him. You know what I mean? It's always gonna be my brother. You know what I mean? But sure. A lot of people ask me like, oh, I see him and never with fat no more. You know, man, fat. That's my brother. He called me the day tomorrow. I'm still there. You know what I mean? Ain't got nothing against fat. Ain't got nothing against me. You know, people just grow. You know, separate go their own ways. You know what I'm saying? I talk to him down there every day. We check in with each other. Right, right. Oh, uh, they 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 want to know some more uh, ball questions. So we gonna. Bring it right back there. All right, your toughest cow, your toughest cow college player you went against. Um, Chris Dunn. When I was playing, mm. he was at Prov he was at Providence. I was at St. John. So you know, Chris Dunn. Um, Doug Doug McDermott. He played for Chicago Bulls. You know, he went to Creighton. Um, there's a lot of other players. You know, um, Justin Winslow. He was at Duke when I played Duke. Jalil mm -hmm. Okafor. There's a lot of a lot of good players. Mm. Mm. Yeah, like uh um, who else? DJ DJ Newbill, I played against him one year, you know, he was tough. A lot a lot of players. Yeah, definitely a lot of players though. I mean I still doing anything, you know, I salute them. Right, right. How did how this pandemic affect affecting you and shit? You well, yeah, you know, I, I got to, I mean, it, it definitely affected me because you know, I just came home. I'm the type of person that needs to be in the gym every day. I get in there once in a while, you know. I be in there, shout out to my guy Lewis Leonard. You know, man, he, he that's who my trainer is right now. He's a good trainer, so you need a trainer. I mean, he definitely a good trainer. Lou, Lou get that work in. Right. So yeah, I, I be in there, but I don't think as much as I, I can be right now because you know, this this corona that's going on. So it's definitely affecting a little bit. But you know, everything's a mental thing. Right, right, for sure. And you, if if you got if you got past jail, you know what I mean. Yeah. You and your mom in jail, like you can get past, you know, anything, man. Yeah, this definitely ain't sure. nothing. I mean, oh, all you know has been in jail. This ain't nothing compared to jail. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So. Yo, man, I saw I, another thing, man. They gonna grind me up if I don't ask you this, man. I saw uh, you and Waiters going back and forth. Like, what was that about, man? You know, that, I mean, that's, that's that's my guy, man. You know, man, Waiters. We just, we mean, like you said, we doing this for. To bring the city back, I mean, I ain't got nothing against Waze, ain't got nothing against me. I mean, I respect what he at, what he doing. You know I mean, I mean, he right. bringing motivation to the city. So you know, we just popping our shit for the city. You know I mean, we just going. I like it. I like it. I like that shit, man. Definitely yeah. competitive, like for sure. Yeah, man. you know, yeah. Everybody thought it was something real. You know, ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't nothing real. I ain't hating on Waze, ain't hating on me. I mean, he where he's supposed to be. I mean, I'm trying to get where he at. You know what I'm saying it's all love. Real shit. Real shit. Yo, no, he definitely, he definitely a good dude. Though. I mean, he tell me whenever I want to come out. I mean, how he call it, where this island? You know, he said whenever I want to come out, just pull up. You I mean he definitely invited me out there to come work out. He all, he always did though. Right, 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 right. Before I let you go, man, I gotta ask you this, man. I've been asking everybody that came on the show, two people that you skipped on the DVD, man. And we keeping it real, she like we keeping it real. My two people was still and Frankie with the Griffiths. That was my two people and shit. And I got ground up for that. But, no, I, you know I, I, mean? I always I always skip Frankie. Right. Who else? <laughs> um I'm trying to think. 
It was, it was um, what's the nigga name? Uh, Wall Street. I never listened to that boy. Mm. How you how you how you skip still though? Still was high. What you mean? I, I mean like still had to grow on me, bro. Like still had to grow on me. That's like he grew on me and shit. Like I, and I ain't gonna lie, I couldn't really vibe the D Jones, bro. I couldn't. D Jones? Yeah, I couldn't. Right. But but Jonesy Jonesy stepped the shit up though. Jonesy definitely. Yeah, a lot of them up. did. I just I just couldn't feel they they, they vibe. You know what I'm saying I couldn't. Still was hot though. Still magic. They was hot. I think like like I think I seen somebody say it the other day. Nh Nh was the boy. Mm -hmm. Definitely was. And Reed talking about. He said Reed said Reed said. If I'm not mistaken, he said Cooley wasn't a factor. Talk about it, shit. Talk about it, shit. Come on, bro. We gonna we listen. I don't go fuck what y'all say about Quilly. He might be a everybody call him a turkey, a bitch, whatever y'all call him. That boy was hot, and he still is hot, bro. He he fucked every beat up to this day. Nobody can't fuck with Quilly. I'm gonna keep it a bean. Yeah, he, like like no matter what, he got some fucking bars. I never. Yeah, he fucked everything he get up on, bro. I swear to this day, yo. I always tell people, yo, I call. I call, call Quill a bunch of names, but when it comes to that rap shit, man, he's he's still special, man. Real shit. Well, who was your favorite in that time and shit? Who was your who was your favorite out of all the niggas? You no, know, you know I was fucking with, I was fucking with Meek and and and, and, and H. Mm -hmm. and, and H was hot as shit. Mm -hmm. Yo, Ed, 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 Ed was hot too. Right, he yeah, definitely had them bars. He definitely. But they asked him, they asked him. You can ask some more questions, bro. I ain't doing shit. No, no, we looking at no, no. We just, we just vibing. We looking in the comments right now and shit. Like I'm looking in the comments, so we don't. What up? They said I used to be in Vox banging all Quilly. No cap, bro. Shit. <laughs> Yo, you definitely Quilly, went to Vox and shit. Quilly told them niggas, you want to come down north? You got to pay the visit, bro. Right. <laughs> they said good call, she. <laughs> Fact, yeah, I yeah, went to box. Box, that was that shit. You heard me? Yeah. Y'all yeah. can't see Rose, though. Y'all can't see Rose. Who? Rose. When I was in there, bro, no school could fuck with us, bro. And I proved that, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely was carrying. You definitely was Yeah, ab, ab was hot. You know, free ab. Ab definitely was hot. But we right, talked about definitely. when headshots was headshot before ab. You know what I mean? You mean fuck with bricks? Yeah, bro. I fuck with bricks. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, man, it's it's getting crazy, man. It's getting crazy. I had interviewed everybody, I had interviewed everybody from headshots, I had interviewed everybody from touch money and shit. So it's getting a little tense. It's getting a little tense and shit. They said, like, they said who won a battle with headshots to touch money. I like headshots. She went with headshots, y'all. He went with headshots. Yeah. Cause he's from North. He said he buys though, y'all. Yeah. Y'all. Y'all they say I'm buying and shit. <laughs> And yo, I ain't gonna, and Nature's fucking everybody up, bro. He fucked Mika. He fucked everybody up, bro. I'm gonna keep it a bean. Real shit, real shit. That shit was crazy though, yo. That shit was definitely crazy, man. Yo, if you if you had to take five, you had to take uh five five people with you, like five ball players, young ball players up and coming now, whatever the case may be, to go to another city and shit, to represent the city, who would you take? Like, like, what you mean, up and coming? Like, like, young boys high school. Scratch that, not up and coming. Just five period, five period. I'm taking me, mm -hmm. BA, mm. Mike Green, DJ Newbill, mm. um, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Mm. That's my five. But if I if I wasn't if, if I wasn't a clue, in, I'm taking I'm taking my young boy Wooga. He, 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 he up and coming right now. Walker, he go to he go to MCS. He just mm. he just won a national temp championship. Mm. He, I mean, he just he got he, he right now. He just getting he just he getting every school in the country right now. He, and I get an offer every time I wake up. Damn, that's wild, bro. Yeah, he definitely Walker Walker. His name I not seen Bobble. He go to MCS. He that work. Somebody said Beefy. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Beefy. Too. Oh yeah, and I'm take I forgot about Beefy. I'm, listen, to Beefy. A lot of niggas sleeping on Beefy, man. Listen. That boy and he a playground. You know how sad I playground legend. I'm not giving him sad. I don't get it fucked up, but I'm saying he's a playground legend, bro. Right, right. RP Shoddy too, y'all, for sure. <laughs> Bam always starting this shit, man. Chill, Bam. <laughs> DJ Newbill on here. Oh yeah. 
He said, DJ, DJ told me the other day, he, he ain't seen once he said he walking around with somebody's house on their neck. You hear me? Dang. That man, he got 40 or 50 around his neck. I said, dang. Damn. Damn. Yo, she, man. We we all rooting for you, man, for sure, man. We we all we we behind you for sure, man. Like, you know what I mean? Your story ain't even finished yet. Like you No, you I got know, I got man. my I got my documentary coming soon. You know, I'm working on that. I got that coming soon. That's gonna be crazy, you know. That's gonna be flames. That's gonna be yeah, that's, that's, that's gonna be crazy, you know. And I and I am I'm, I'm gonna write a book too. I'm gonna start my book. I started some of it, you know what I mean? Right, right. You ain't writing no rats while you was in jail, man. <laughs> you know everybody write rats, but you know they ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't drop it yet though. You know everybody. That's that's what you do in jail. You know I did a lot of whole time, so right. Do you in jail? Really shit, really shit. Hold up, let me. Got to put your fucking flyer up. Who's your who? Who's your top five rapper? Who me? Yeah. Right. I'm talking about. Hold on. Before we get back to here, shout out to him right now. Who you like? Right you now. Shit? Right now. Up and coming. Yeah. Or just period. No, I'll be, I'll be coming. Like the rebels that I'm on, like took down these. Not we ain't talking about back then, right now. Oh shit! I fuck with uh, Ryder. I fuck with Lee. I heard. I, I heard about. I heard about Ryder. I ain't hearing yet though. I heard he from Southwest. Oh, you, like got, that. you gotta get with Ryder, bro. He shit. He he give me that old feel back. That that that. You know what I mean? He give me that old feel back and shit like that. That that touch money and headshots era. Like you know what I mean? And he got bars too. Yeah, I, I, got, I heard. I heard about it. I, I gotta get with him. I heard. Definitely heard about him. What about Lee Ward? You fuck with Lee Ward? Yeah, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. I fuck. Uh, Leaf, uh, Leaf hot. Yeah. I fuck with uh the young boy Brucey. I fuck with him. I might have him on the show. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? It's a lot. They put me. They put me on game, man. They put me on game right now. They definitely put me on game and shit. Pound side. Bam said I need sure, to hear. Bam said I need to hear Thaw on the beat. <laughs> oh yeah, we can't. Forget no, that's about my that's my man. That's, that's my man. We even put on little skits and shit. You got my uh, you got here thaw on the beat. Yeah. So you For said sure. you said you said Leaf War. You said Ryder. You said Brucey. Yeah, and I said uh, I said the nigga uh, fucking um, damn, what I fucking said? Shit. Them youngins, man, they they killing shit. All them youngins, they killing shit. I gotta get them up on the show too. I'm gonna definitely get all the youngins up on the show, man. They, they holding shit down, man. Yeah. The boy Cinco, somebody Cinco. I've been hearing a lot. Of, I forgot. I've been yeah, you talking about Mama? But Mama Cinco, that's my that's my boy. Right. That's that, right. that's that's that, that, that's Bam artist. Yeah, Bam been put me on game. Osama yeah. definitely flames. Osama yeah. definitely flames. R.P. Colliver, he was hot as shit, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Collier. You know, the city city lost a good one, you know. Yeah, today a sad day, y'all, for sure. R.P. Colliver, for sure. You don't listen to you don't like Poundside? Yeah, I see I see Poundside. I see Poundside. I fuck with him. Poundside, like he just different. He from like he just like on a he different is. wave. He is, though. It's, it's, it's a lot of rappers though. Diamond Street yeah. King. I like I like King. Yeah, King is yeah, definitely Diamond Street King. Yeah, for sure. The boy Sosa, yeah, Sai Sosa, he definitely. He definitely yeah. hot as shit too. This yeah, this, yeah. This the most this the most like I don't know, that's the most like rappers that Philly had that like that really got a chance. You know what I'm saying? Real shit. And the door wide open now, man. And and, like, and, 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 and and you know what's crazy? Like the crazy thing is like that that's right now how everybody's right now. We're not even sticking together how we supposed to, you know what I'm saying? So just shit, imagine man. if niggas if niggas start sticking together, how we supposed to our other like Atlanta doing it or New York doing it, we'd be right. even crazier. Real shit, and man, and that's why I got this, this platform for it, man. That's you why, I, mean? I ain't gonna lie, that was, that was one of the reasons why I came home and started talking to the young boys, you know what I'm saying? Because no, he, we gotta speak on that too, man. We gotta definitely <laughs> speak on that, man. I see you definitely going to a lot of speaking engagements, going to gyms and shit with the youngest and all that. Like, speak on that, man, because that's that's heavy, bro. That's definitely heavy, man. Yeah, like, that, that was like one of my main, when I was sitting in the jail cell, you know, as the years went by, that was my main reason. I mean, that was one of my main focuses, like, Coming home and like talking to the youth because I know I know a lot of kids looked up to me and I know what I meant to a lot of kids so I figure I can use my voice I probably can change a couple of lives you know what I'm saying and oh, also sure. give them, like also give them my story give give them my story so they won't make the mistakes I made you know what I'm saying or, or be around the fake people that I've been around or seen some right. things that I, that I seen and don't know how I get through it so you know I figure I come home and talk to the youth and you know you know lead them the right way you know what I'm saying that's shit that's yo you gonna get your blessings for that bro. That's yeah, you know, I, I, I do it. I do it out of kind of my heart. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, like I said, still to this day, a lot of kids look up to me. A lot of kids DM me. 
a lot of kids still wish me the best. You feel what I'm saying? So, I'm if sure. I, I mean, I ain't, you know, I ain't rich, so I can't give back. So it's my way of giving back. You feel what I'm saying? Right. One, one, one other thing I want to touch with you, man. I want to touch on mental health, man, because you had to be like all that you've been through. Like you had to been going through some type of mental health. Like speak on that for the for the young the young people that, that's going through that shit right now. You know, like, like man, like mental, mental, mental is lucky in life. You know what I'm saying, like, if you if you just like use your brain and use your mind, just like circulate things that's around you, and just and just like, and just just know your worth. You know what I'm saying that, that was that was like that's, that's what kept me like that's what kept me like real mentally strong. I know my worth. You know what I'm saying, you know, I made right. I made a bad I made a bad decision, but you know at the end of the day I knew who I am. You know what I'm saying? I know what I'm worth. So that 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 would kept me like you know that kept my mental on. You know what I'm saying so. I I'm basically sure. like I took that and ran with it. You know what I'm saying, and I'm like sure. you know, you know, when you're in jail, it's not like it's not it's not physical. No. Like jail is mental. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. I've been through I've been through a lot of things in jail. I mean that 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 you know that tested me that that right. even made me strong. You know what I'm saying? Like like I said, losing losing my mom was like one of the one of the like one of the biggest tests I had in jail. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. like I've been I've been in jail three and a half years. I've seen a lot. Like. I just seen people lose they lose their moms and their grandmas and you know next day they woke up dead they killed themselves you feel what I'm saying real shit sure. so nice. you know I used that as a positive and it just made made my mind stronger and 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 it just it just made me focus even more and it just gave me it, and like losing my mind like it made it gave me my motivation like that's my motivation now you feel what I'm saying that been my motivation but as though I like, bands though me being locked up and losing my mind like that made me come home and want to jump on right into basketball even more because I know she loved and I know like. Every time I played, she was in that front row cheering me on. You know what I'm saying? Real sure. So, so that was that, that that that's that, that gave me my strength every day and just give me the courage to not give up on basketball. Wow, wow, man. That's that's oh, I mean that's good shit, man. Another thing, man. Another thing, man. The the city had got hit real bad, like with the with the with like you know the drug abuse and shit like that. Even me, like even me, I definitely went through it and shit like that. You know what I mean? No, I, I listen, bro. I went through it too, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I mean, speak on it, man, because a lot of youngers is going through it, man. A lot of youngers is taking a thousand perks a day and shit. Like, I know I was going crazy, too, man. But I had to, you know what I mean, tap in and get myself together, man. Like, I know that you went through a similar situation. Speak on it, bro. Yeah, you know, like, like our generation is like, like we want to we wanna be these rappers or, or live this life. You know what I'm saying? And the most part of it is getting high, shooting guns, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I ain't gonna lie. Like I was, I was the ones that fell into the trap, started getting high. You know, you know, I had a lot of money at a young age, so you know, mm -hmm. I was living that life. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I was rich already. I feel like I ain't need nothing. So, you know, that led that led to me like not know, not knowing what to do with the money. You feel what I'm saying? So that, that led right. to me popping perks. But you know, at some point in life, man, it like like drugs. Like you gotta come to realize that you don't need drugs. I always thought I needed drugs. You know what I'm saying because I was going through so much. Even when I had money, when I was on the streets and I was doing a lot of shit. I had so much right. on my mind, so I feel like get high was gonna like take me off that. You know what I'm saying? But all the reality, sure. like it got me, it got me caught up into a bad situation that I couldn't get out of. You know what I'm saying? But right. you know, you know, it, it, we all learn, though, man. You know, we all learn. You know, at the end of the day, we all think we grown men. You know, you and you learn from your mistakes. So, I mean, For eventually, sure, man. eventually, like they're they learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I look at it, like, I look at it as this, like. Like when you are getting high and it comes to a point in time you can't afford your high, that's when me that's when you need to stop. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that sure. leads to you that leads to you doing bad things like robbing somebody, killing somebody, all just to get a perk. You know what I'm saying? Or get some weed. You know what sure. I'm saying? So For I look sure. at it. I look at it as that as like if you can't afford it, you shouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? For sure, bro. And, and, and another and another thing is like like go with your own mindset. Don't listen to a rap mm -hmm. like nigga. Like, I'm on like I'm on eight zanes. Don't go pop eight zanes because your favorite rapper said that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So you gotta like use your mind. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and, and like use use the people like be around the people. The good people want to see you do good. You know what I'm saying? Like surround yourself by people who don't get high or don't allow you to get high. You know what I'm saying? That's something I learned. Like, like Real like you, like we all from Philly and we know we know how Philly is. I mean, when you up, they with you. When you down, they disappear. You know what I'm saying? And and, and 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 we all know we all know about the yes men. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. I love you. I right. love you too, Lee. I love you too, bro. Like you know, we we all we all we all know about the yes men that be around us. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, yes men, yes men. You don't. I'm gonna tell you by experience. You don't need yes men around you. I had a hundred yes men around me. You know what I'm saying? And look, 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 where I ended up. You know what I'm saying? They all disappeared. You know what I'm saying? Wow. 
But Word, you know, like man. you know, it just made me stronger. You know, you shout out to all the ones that's still around me, still rocking with me. You know, because it ain't over. You know what I'm saying? How I look Word at sure. it, jump, jump off the train, you gone. You feel me? Man, you got the whole city behind you. We all rooting for she, man. Before we close, man, one other thing I want to ask, man, before just the closing question. If somebody, if I, like, I need you to talk to the youngest, man. If they going, like, talk to the youngest that's going through similar things that you was going through, like, being from the hood, but, you know, having good talent and shit, and, you know, struggling with, with different things, like, you know what I mean? Like, like speak to them. Tell them, like, you know what I mean? Tell them, like, you know what I mean? Like, what's best for them to do, like, you know what I mean? I mean, my, my advice, man, to the to the to the youth, I mean, cause because I'm one of the ones like, you know, a lot of people think my life is perfect, but I've been through everything. I mean, DHS, I man, I've been taken, you know, man, I went to like I said, I went to jail. I mean, I lived in a boarded up houses, so my life is no good than anybody else's house, you know what I'm saying? I just right. I just found I just found something in my life that'll lead me somewhere good in life. So, you know, if you're good at basketball, rapping, whatever you do, football, I mean, stay in your lane and stick what you do. And like I said, surround yourself with good people who want to see you do good. Right. Don't 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 be around no yes man. You don't need no yes man. And even if ain't nothing wrong with if you're good at basketball and the school wants you out of California, go out there. Cause ain't not, we all know what Philly what, what we gonna lead to in Philly. Wow. Like right. all these 140 people in here, we all know what Philly is. Yeah. We're either gonna end up in jail, dead, or or killing somebody else and be in jail for the rest of our life. So we gotta we gotta we gotta like use 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 what God blessed us with, our talents and run with it. You know what I'm saying? And we all, at wow. the end of the day, you still be from Philly. Philly still going to love you. But you got, like, like me growing up, you got to distance yourself, man, because there ain't nothing here. Like, I came home three and a half years, everything's still the same. Still the same people, same girls, same clubs, same people on Instagram front like they got it. Same right. people. It's, it's, still, it's all still the same, man. Ain't nothing going to change. That's real shit, man. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you, man, for sure. And like I... I just keep saying this because I want you to know you got our support, man. And we rooting for you, man. It's like your story is not over, bro. Your story no, is for not sure. Over. You know, I'm like I said, I'm the type of person I'm gonna keep pushing. I know right. I know what the law got me in hands, you know. I get phone calls. I talk to one of the biggest persons in the world, man, worldwide was. I talk to him every day, you know what I'm saying? I know, right. I know, I know where I belong and I know I man, I gotta keep working to get there. It ain't over. And man, I'm I'm to me it's like I'm getting younger. Like I'm getting I'm my, I'm getting older but my mind getting younger, you know what I'm saying? And I'm and I'm realizing things now. So you know, I'm I'm right. I'm, I'm I'm gonna keep working until I reach my goal. I mean, my goal is to put a hat on and walk across the stage. Now, you know, I got it I got what it takes, you know. I just took I mean, I just right. tripped I tripped over a rock, I get back up, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I look at it. Wow, man. Well, I'm gonna get with you. We are gonna lock in. We are gonna definitely sit down and do a one on one and all that. And you know, what I mean, we de definitely gonna be a friend to the show too. I'm gonna definitely tap you on tap, uh, tap you out just to talk to the youngest and all that, man, for sure. Cause we, we want to spread this po we want positivity and all that. You know what I mean? Like, yes. you know what I mean, keep going, and we, and, and we love you, she for sure, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And, you know, th this summer, you know, I'm doing a basketball camp. You know, man, you can bring all your kids to whatever. You know, man, sure. I'm, I'm I'm just I'm giving back all summer. I'm doing basketball camps. You know, I'm doing clinics. Anything I can do for the youth, man. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm on. You know, and anybody want anybody want to get down with me and work with me, you know, go around talking to kids that that been through things, that had something going on, you know, I'm with it. Just hit me in my DM. You know, man, we're going to take care of the youth. Right. For sure, I'm with it. This is the Fully First 48. This Workout Wednesday, y'all. Next week, we're going to have uh, Jesse Hart come on and talk to the youth and all that. I appreciate you, Sheet, man. I'm going to lock in with you. We're going to talk. And, you know what I mean? Fully First 48. We're signing out, y'all. All right. Thanks, bro. Thank you.